Please stand clear of the doors. Is that Remy from Welcome Remy's Roundtable? The, Monorail, the Disney Marvel Express. Your next stop is... Please hold on to the handrails and stay clear of the doors. We'll arrive at the uh, Magic Kingdom momentarily. Is that Remy? I think it is. He's standing right here doing uh, his Monorail. What? Exactly. <laughs> Welcome to episode 84 of the Diz His Podcast. I'm one of your lost children, Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Jen. Today, we will be giving the his on Peter Pan's flight. So before we get into Peter Pan's flight, we have a special guest today, someone who has actually worked at, on the attraction, Remy. How you doing today, Remy? Yeah, man. How you doing? Good, man. So uh, you want to tell us a little, bit, a little bit about yourself and uh, a little bit about your love for Disney? Sure. Well, uh, I first started working for Disney back when I was uh, back when I was 15 years old. That's when I first started working for the company. Uh, I gradually moved up uh, when I turned once I turned 18 years old. That's when I started working for the attractions. So and that's when I started working at Magic Kingdom. I worked at uh, Animal, Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, but not Epcot. I, even though they want me to transfer over to Epcot, I go, nah, I really don't want to work at Epcot. I'd, so. say, the, I'd say the same thing, man. Why so, not, man? Why do you want to work at Epcot? They have, they have the most boring attractions <laughs> on property. I hear you, buddy. So I mean, the only th- I mean, but the only thing I do like is you can drink around the world for under forty bucks, and you call it, you call it a day. But you couldn't because you'd be working. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, I was working for Disney for a while, then I switched over to Universal. And then SeaWorld, and then back at Disney again. So I was moving from one theme park to the other. Mm-hmm. And oh, uh, interesting. And oh wow. I, yeah, and of course I have a uh, I have a po- I have a podcast. It's called uh, Remy's Roundtable. We cover uh, everything that has to do with Florida. We cover restaurants, bars, the theme parks, Disney, anything you can think of that has to do with Florida. Awesome. Interesting. Man. We'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I was actually on the on the show on his show, mm-hmm, and we also Remy and I did a virtual spotlight, which was also yes. a lot of fun. And he talked about some of his cool Disney memories and some of the famous people that he met. And uh, you know, he, he's a, a musician, and uh, so yeah, so yeah, uh, I'm I'm happy to have you on the show, Remy. Dude, I'm, it's gonna be a blast tonight. Let's, let's let's just put it that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, man. So Peter Pan's flight. Let's go ahead and get into it, okay? So <laughs> yeah. Uh, I definitely liked, I enjoy this attraction. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Sometimes it's just a little bit too long of a wait for me. Sometimes. You know, it's, it's almost every time. It's, <laughs> it's a really long wait, but, you know, uh, the queue, which we're going to get a little bit deeper into the queue yeah. of the attraction is amazing. I, it's a short ride, right? Mm-hmm. That's the only thing about it all. So it's a short ride, but it's also a really good ride. Uh, Alex, what do you think of the ride? Uh, I don't like it. But the only reason why you don't like are it is because of the way. Are we surprised? Really? I mean. If you are surprised, you're a new listener. <laughs> I'm shocked, sir. I am shocked about your answer. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not a giant. I like Peter Pan. Uh, but the ride itself, it's, it's okay. It's the wait time. If the wait time was shorter, I maybe I'd go on it more often. But because okay. of that wait time, I'm not going to go on it very often. I don't okay, well, can, you, can, you see any, can you see any changes on that attraction that you want to see improved? No, I think the traction's actually decent. It's really just the wait time and the, how short of a ride it is just kills it for me. Of course, right. when my kids get older, I'll go on it all the time. And maybe I'll, I'll, as I go on it more and more, I'll start to love it more and more. But because I don't go on very often, I'm not willing to wait the wait time. And I'm not really to do it. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. How about uh, you, Jen? What do you think? Well, you know, it's like my favorite fantasy land. I know. In Disney World. <laughs> And I drag everybody on it. I know you do, for sure. Which and is sometimes gonna, sometimes we miss things because we're on it, which is my memory later. But. Yeah, which which both are which is like both both of our memories, which was really funny, kind of. But we'll talk more but, about that later. You know, I love one of my all time favorite um, Disney characters is Nana. Is Nana? Um, I just really? I love Nana. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because she's a nursemaid dog. Yeah. So. Duh. Yeah, sure. I guess. Okay. How about you? So, how, how, are you done, Jen? Are you done, Jen? I'm, yeah, I'm okay, good. Okay. How about you, Remy? Uh, what do you think of the attraction? 
So this was this was actually my very first attraction. I went on with my dad and my uh, my mom. Oh wow! And uh, every time every time I go on that ride as an adult, I still have that memory mm-hmm. of riding Peter Pan with my family. And every time I go off, I had this little tear coming down my eye. And the cat a cast member goes, "Dude, are you crying on Peter Pan?" I'm like I am. And they go, "You want to ride again?" I'm like, "I'll tell you my bad story later about what happened." So they go, "Oh, that's a sweet memory. You know what? Go ahead and ride it again." So uh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing your memory later. I think the queue on the ride. Is probably one of the, my favorite oh. favorites. You know, a Pandora, yes. uh, Flight of Passage. You know, I uh, love the queue there. But Peter Pan. I mean, I remember my first time going through that queue line. I was like, wow, like this is really cool. Yeah. Is, you, have you been? Have you I been through that part of the queue line? I don't remember if I have or not. Honestly, I don't yeah. recall. So maybe I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we want to rate it. Oh yeah, we can go ahead and give it a rating. Right. Uh, how about you, Remy? How about you want to give it a rating first? One to ten. Okay, I'll give the I'm gonna give the Q line first rating. Okay, I'll give the Q line, I'll give the Q line a rating first. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a seven. Okay, they they can they can do they can do a lot more in that Q line. Okay, the ride the ride itself I give about an eight eight and a half. Okay, okay. Uh, this real quick the Q line. Uh, are you saying they can do a lot more to make it more? Because uh, it's really usually a really long wait, right? It are is, you saying they I, can do updates to it to make it shorter waits? No, I mean I think they can add more to that uh, to that queue line to make it just a little bit tad longer, but make the wait time like a whole lot shorter. Make it more make it more interactive for for the families right. inside of that queue line. Okay, okay, I hear you. Okay, uh, Alex, how about you? Want to give it a rating? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna give it a six. Okay, which is not terrible. No, I mean, it's pretty bad, but <laughs> <laughs> not good. It's not horrible. It's just meh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, how about you, Jen? You want to give it a rating? Well, I'm going to give it a rating. It's a it's a good solid eight and a half. Eight and a half. Okay. Oh, not even a nine or a ten. No, eight and a half is good. Yeah, eight and a half is really good. I'm going to give it an eight. I'm going to give it an eight. Yeah, Q. I'm going uh, uh, Q to me a nine. You know, you know something that <laughs> eight's kind of high though, man. Because that <laughs> I really enjoy the ride. It's just so short. You know, I'm just like, it hey, if I'm going to wait that long, I'm going to wait for attraction. I want to be at least. I guess it's like five minutes. No, no, no I don't even think it's five minutes. No, we get we say the wait time later. Huh? Be, we'll see the wait time later. You'll be shocked. The wait time? I mean, I'm sorry. The right time. The right time? Yes. Oh wow! So it's not even five minutes. Yeah, man. No. I need at least a. I, I need at least a five minute ride. Come on, come on. You gotta make, make me wait in line five minutes. At least five minutes. I wonder if it's. I wonder what's the shortest ride time of any Disney ride. Barnstormer. Barnstormer is the quickest oh, ride. That is pretty fast. That's pretty I good, man. I can see that. That is pretty fast. That's true. <laughs> that's a good point. But that's- you know what? The wait time, not that long. That's true. Not it's, long. It's not nearly as, that's true. So you can go ahead. It kind of goes hand in hand. But I'm going to wait. But who knew that Peter? Why? Why is that attraction <laughs> seriously as long as Pan, like uh, Flight of Passage sometimes? Every time I go to that park. Let's get to the his on um, Peter Pan's Flight. Woohoo! Peter Pan's Flight is a real suspended dark ride at Disneyland, Magic Kingdom, Tokyo Disneyland, Disneyland Park Paris, and Shanghai Disneyland. The story of Peter Pan begins in 1902 with the publication of The Little White Bird by J.M. Barry. It's the semi-autobiographical tale of a man becoming enamored of a little boy who he wants to steal away from his mother. To befriend the child, he makes up the story of Peter Pan. In 1904, the story became a play, Peter Pan or The Boy Who Would Not Grow Up. In 1911, Barry turned the play into a book originally titled Peter and Wendy, but soon to become known as Peter Pan. That's the book we usually think of when we talk about the original book of Peter Pan although it's several steps removed from the original. Okay, so we're, try- we're kind of getting into the introduction of Peter Pan itself, right? Mm-hmm, not, yeah. not really talking about the ride too much, but right. uh, we'll be getting into the ride here, uh, I'm sure, very shortly. Right, Alex? Yeah. Yeah, so do you guys have anything to add about this history or anything to say about this history? It's a little creepy. I know, right? <laughs> That's what I thought when I first started, when I, when I, when I was just reading it, whatever, or listening yeah, to it. Yeah, it is weird. It's definitely a little I creepy. Mean, I'm glad I I'm glad I like the the, the book. Now I don't think I would be inclined to read it if that's if that's how you started it. Hey, let me tell you about this story that I wrote. So I about a little boy that one I want to steal away from his mom. That's <laughs> yeah. No, I'm good. Hard pass. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, things are a little different now. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure it was really pretty socially acceptable. Uh, yeah, I don't even think that was socially acceptable like back in that time either. <laughs> but. Uh, but I guess things were just overall different, you know. Uh, but if you think about it, even like in Hook, you know, like the movie Hook and Peter, if you think about it, I mean, it's kind of creepy. Some person's coming into your window that you don't know, 
and the person's taking you away to a faraway yeah. land, right? Yeah. Yeah. In 1905, the play came to America. Walt Disney saw the play and was enthralled. Later, a classmate at Park Elementary School produced his own version, with Walt in the starring role. With his brother Roy manning the block and tackle, Walt Disney portrayed Peter Pan. He recollected that as a boy, when the block and tackle once gave way, he flew directly into the laps of the audience. Walt said, No actor ever identified with the part he was playing more than I. Walt loved the story of Peter Pan and found it to be a story he could relate to the most, as Walt was a boy who never wanted to grow up. Since 1935, Disney had intended to make a movie about Peter Pan and had finally acquired rights to it in 1939 from the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, to whom Barry had given the rights. Because of World War II, the project was shelved until 1950 when the creative team shifted from the movie Alice in Wonderland to Peter Pan. With it came the last collaborative effort of the Nine Old Men, a group so-called by Disney that had created the animated classics. Hey, so uh, let's talk about here this for a second. Let's talk about how Disney World is very similar to Neverland. When you go there, you feel like a kid. Yeah. Right? Of course. So there's no doubt this is the Pan is like the perfect... He's, he's this connection to Walt Disney, mm-hmm. very similar, right? Yeah. Him, Walt Disney, never wanted to grow up, right? Great. Um, and it's uh, this this attraction really is this perfect for Magic Kingdom, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, it is. Definitely. I mean, there, there's definitely a lot of parallels there. Peter Pan is one of the most famous attractions at Magic Kingdom, and they have one of the one of the top rated attraction on the list. When you go to Magic Kingdom, that's the first ride that everybody wants to go on. Because all of a sudden, all the fat, all the uh, fast passes are gone, and you're waiting in those 200 to 300 minute wait times, yep. and you say to yourself, "Why did I even bother waiting this line for five hours where I can be <laughs> riding on other attractions in this park?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but man, it's like Peter Pan is Walt Disney. Now, after reading this and listening to yeah. this right here, Peter Pan's Walt Disney. He's the man that never wanted to grow up. That's the reason why he made these parks. You know, there's always yeah. be a kid when you go there. I never really made that connection until like right now. Watch videos of him. It's, he's very boyish in the way he plays around. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No doubt about it. And, uh, you know, that's, I think this is, that's definitely, no doubt in my mind, that's one of the reasons why people love going to Disney World is because you can feel like you get it again. No doubt. Peter Pan's flight was an opening day attraction at Disneyland on July 17, 1955. It, like many attractions at Disneyland, required hard and fast labor in order for it to be created on time. The ride was designed by many of the same animators who had worked on the film. There was a lot of pressure on the ride itself to be a success, since Peter Pan was the most recent Disney movie at the time, being released in 1953. The unique track and ride vehicle had to be tested, so they built a test track at Disney Studios to make sure their plans worked. Located in Fantasyland, Peter Pan's flight was designed as a dark ride, which was a staple of amusement piers on the east and west coasts. These Imagineers utilized black lights, special effects, and animated props, which brought the dark ride experience to another level, redefining what a dark ride could be. The ride was designed so the guests would be Peter Pan flying through the scenes, but guests never quite understood this concept and always wondered why Peter Pan was not in the attraction. Hey, Remy, so you know the history of this ride, right? You know a lot about the history. I, you seem to know a lot about the... Do you have anything to add about this piece of history? All right, so I got my uh, history list, which I uh, had all all morning. I didn't get, I didn't get home till 2 o'clock this morning. I, I was drinking all night last night with my couple buddies of mine <laughs> so i was like typing so much and i got this history history right here about uh my favorite attraction uh Peter pan flight this attraction this attraction was the very first disney attraction both for disneyland and disney world so that's a huge plus on their side okay uh-huh. this, this ride operates on on an omni mover do you know yep. do you guys know what that is yeah omni- like an like haunted yes. mansion that's one uh, uh, Nemo, the Nemo Seven, the Seas ride right? does the Omni Ariel, uh, no, that's not. It. Yeah, no, yeah, Ariel. Right? Ariel's, Ariel's one uh, third. Okay, Spaceship yeah, Earth. Spaceship Earth is another one. You're missing. You're missing a couple more. Buzz Lightyear. No, Buzz Lightyear is another one, and mm-hmm. the last one is no. The, you got two more. What park? Sorry, what, give us a park. Magic Kingdom. Magic they're both. At, they're both in Magic Kingdom. Oh man, they're both in Magic Kingdom. Mm. Um, man. Can you give us a hint? What land? Well, okay, so they're both in Tomorrowland. Oh, God. I already said Buzz, so that one's done. I, for some reason, I came in. Oh, no, no. I haven't, go right, ahead and tell us, yeah. Tomorrowland. All right, you ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah. People Mover? Oh. Does that count? 
It's also an yeah, Omni mover. Uh-huh. And last but not least, the Carousel of Progress. You know something? Uh, I was, I was, I was, I was really, thinking of that. Is it really an Omni mover? Well, yes, it is. It's like a huge one. But really? Yeah. It's like yes. one big Omni mover. For real? So the wow. definition, the definition is this. This system allowed ride vehicles to be continually moving, so they are still moving using ramps to load and unload the guests. So that's pretty much what how Disney wanted to make these attractions in the first place. Mm-hmm. It goes, okay, I need to figure out a way how to how to create Pure Pan Omni Mover system. So what he did was he took like what I said, took it to Disney's California side and test out test out over there first. Uh, let's see what else I have here. Uh, the ride makes you makes us use of force perspective, so you feel yep. higher, higher of which you're only 15 feet off the ground, and here in uh, the one the attraction here in Orlando, Florida. Yeah, which is kind of crazy. I mean, this is like you know they they use it's like ma- it's magic. It's straight up magic. You know, magicians they use this. I was talking to Sean Forquer. You know, I did I did a virtual spotlight with him a couple months ago, or whatever, and he's a magician. He's like the world magic champion. And he says that's the reason why he loves Disney so much because they use magic in so many of the rides, so many of the attractions. Mm-hmm. And this is a great example, right? It- yeah. Uh, Pierre Pan wasn't Pierre Pan wasn't originally in the ride. You guys want to guess who what that ride was uh, for? Uh, Captain Hook. Not Captain Hook. Wait, what was it for? Yep. Was it someone in Peter Pan? Like no. a different, like a different movie. A different movie. Oh. This ride had nothing to do with Peter Pan at all. So uh, it says here that uh, Peter Pan wasn't originally in the ride. This ride was actually meant for Snow White. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't know that. That's pretty so cool. They gonna, so they were going to put Snow White's Scary Adventure, or as should I say, Magical Adventure, in Peter, Pan, Peter Pan's flight domain area. That's where Snow White was going to be. It was going to be in that little area right there. Oh, that's Kingdom. pretty cool. Nice. No. All right, so let's talk about. I, I got a little history for you guys. Let's talk about the uh, the London scene when you guys are flying over London. Yeah. Have you guys noticed what uh, the, how they make the car moves? It's on. It's like above, right? It's like on no, a. No, he's talking about the little cars in the. Bottom. Oh no, the no, the no. Okay, so <laughs> uh, uh, this this was really cool. A, a Disney Imagineer found a way to make these little cardboard cars. And just painted them black and white, not black and white colors, but uh, the dark light colors. Yeah. Make it look like, you know, make it enhance the, uh, the painting of the vehicles. So what they did was they're like, how can make these cars move? Well, they can't, they cannot put on a uh, connect system. So it's on a string put, or something like pulling. They put these cars on a bicycle chain. Oh, okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> so they're using, so they're using a bicycle chain. And when I was doing a track walk uh, during, uh, closing time, we uh-huh. had a, I had a chance to check it out on how exactly they did it. I'm like, wait a minute, that's a bicycle chain. How did they do that on the ride? So they showed us, and I'm like, okay, that's that's pretty interesting how they actually did that. Huh, that's cool. That's pretty uh, cool. And can I ask you a question real quick? So what's pulling it? What do you mean what's pulling it? So you know, it's on a bicycle chain, like the little cars on a bicycle chain, right? Mm-hmm. So what is it linked up to to make it move back and make a move? So there are a couple, there are a couple of timetables, uh, you know, where the time, uh, a time chain, uh, mm-hmm. like, like, like on a, uh, a grandfather clock, mm-hmm. you know, those, those, those kind of chain mechanisms, yeah. those round circles, that's what they're using okay. under, underneath, underneath that big cardboard, uh, table to make those, uh, little miniature cars vroom. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Nice. That's cool. Shanghai is one of the most enhanced Peter Pan of all. I need to watch that ride through. It is unreal. Yeah. Peter Pan's flight is also known as an e-ticket attraction. Oh, I believe it. Hey, do you know something's really amazing about this ride? Is that it's oh it's always constantly moving, right? The ride's just constantly going, going, right. going. And yeah. it's still hitting those crazy wait times. Yeah. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yep. Back then, back then when I was working there. The only shortest wait time we had was under 50 minutes. And that was probably during fireworks or something. No, it's because we were broken down. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's it. That's all I have for you guys. Uh, Peter Pan's history. Thanks. Cool. Okay. Okay. Here's the next part. Thank you, Remy, by the way. That was, that was pretty interesting. Peter Pan's flight was a success at Disneyland. So, of course, when Disney World was set to open, an almost exact copy was planned for Magic Kingdom's Fantasyland. Imagineers Bill Justice and Bill Martin expanded on the original Disneyland attraction, 
but with more land and resources to utilize, they were able to enhance the ride experience and story. The ride used a new pipe rail track system that fixed issues like noise and maintenance. The Omnimover ships were larger and the loading area featured moving ramps like that at Haunted Mansion for easier boarding. The ride also now featured Peter Pan himself. They added a scene where Hook and Pan dueled on board the Jolly Roger and Pan and the Darlings sailing the ship. With the bigger area, they were able to add in scenes like Lost Boys Camp and the Mermaid Lagoon, and they even expanded on some of the scenes that carried over from Disneyland. They were also able to integrate audio animatronics into the attraction. Peter Pan's flight at Magic Kingdom opened on October 3, 1971. When Disneyland upgraded Fantasyland in 1982, all these successful changes made for Magic Kingdom's ride were made to Disneyland's Peter Pan's flight. The wait queue for Disneyland was also changed to an inside line, which featured interactive games while waiting in Darling's nursery. So uh, the queue, definitely, you know, wonderful. Uh, talking about the ride, mm-hmm. using the black lights, right? It really gives it, you know, when you go on Frozen Ever After, yeah. right? And it's like kind of like LCD lights, whatever, on the face. And right. it really feels like it's like animated. To me, it almost gives that feel where it's like animation, right? Right, yeah. To, having that effect of the black lights on the characters. It makes it super bright, the colors. It, it does make it super bright. And, t- uh, bright. and to me, it's almost like it's live animated right there in front of you. It's like you're in the cartoon almost away. That's how I feel, at least. Yeah. Go ahead, Remy. It feels like you're. It feels like that you're already in the movie. Yep. But uh, I forgot. I forgot to add one thing in the trivia. Uh, not, I'm sorry, in the trivia, but the, the little history. <laughs> okay, you guys saw that there's uh there's three hidden Mickey's in that attraction. I did not know that. I only saw one when I did the history. There's three. Which one? They're, Tell us. Missing a lot. We got, they're missing a lot of them. So the first one is right right in the beginning of the mural. If you guys are looking as you're lo- loading onto the ship. If you guys look at Skull Island mm-hmm. on that vehicle. Oh, painting, okay. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. You guys look on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see three figures that look exactly like uh, Mickey Mouse. So that's one hidden Mickey. Oh, okay. Nice. Second one is in the flower bed over by the mermaids. That's where that's the second one. Okay. Third one is when Captain Hook is staying on TikTok. Oh, really? Where's that one at? Right in the back of his head. Who? Like, which one? TikTok or Captain Hook? Captain Hook. Really? Like, like when he's standing, when he's standing on his head, you can see a little. There's a little glimpse of Mickey Mouse. Huh. That's interesting. interesting. That's pretty cool. Nice. You guys are at the Magic Kingdom. There, there you go. Hey, so did you, uh, you did you obviously when you worked there? Is that where, how you found out about these? Well, we had to take a test. So in our <laughs> test, our in our test book, it literally says, "Where are the hidden Mickey's on this attraction?" I'm like. Here, 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 and here. Hey, hey, man, I have, I have a theory, right? That all cast members, right, they have to go through like a hazing, right? And you uh, have to ride Small World like 24 hours straight. Is that true? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I, wrote for, I wrote for an hour. <laughs> you, wrote, you, wrote, you wrote it for one hour straight? One hour straight. Why'd you do that for? <laughs> they forced us. <laughs> for what? They forced, they forced us. That was during, ori- that was during orientation. <laughs> so, so he's kind of right. I am kind of right. That so it, yeah, it is hazing. So if we wanted, if we wanted to stay on Pierre Pan, your boss will say, "Go! I want you to go over to Small World and go ride for an hour straight." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I hated it. <laughs> I would love it, man. During evac, during the, e- the evacuation on this attraction, uh huh, you can literally step off the ride. Even though you are, even though you are 15 feet off the ground, there's a little button that we push in the in the control room where we can actually lower down the the ships manually. Really? So you, guys, you guys can get off at at a safe level while you guys evacuating off the attraction. So like the railing from like oh come down or whatever. Yeah, like the whole entire wow. ride system will come straight down at a lower level so you can get off the ride more safely and more uh, precautious. Make sure you guys are following all the Disney rules of how to evacuate an attraction. That's awesome. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Wow. Interesting to know. So, yeah. You board a two to three passenger miniature gallon Omnimover, which is suspended from an above track to enhance the feeling of flight. The ship leaves the load area and travels through Darling's nursery with Wendy, John, and Michael in bed and Peter Pan's shadow on the wall. Guests hear Peter Pan say, Come on, everybody. Here we go. The ship then flies from the nursery window over a moonlit London, much like the animated movie. 
Below is a miniature layout of London with some famous landmarks including St. Paul's Cathedral, Big Ben, the Tower Bridge, and Thames River. The ships head towards the second star on the right and reach Neverland. The ship then passes some more landmarks, not in this order, including a glowing volcano, giant octopus, fish color 3, the Lost Boys Camp, and Skull Rock. In front of Skull Rock is Princess Tiger Lily tied up to a pole, and then with a quick turn to the left, you see Captain Hook's ship, where Captain Hook is sword fighting Peter Pan. Mr. Shmee and the Darling Children are also on the ship with Wendy, walking the plank. You turn left and come across Hook balancing on TikTok's snout and Shmee in a rowboat trying to rescue him. With the last right turn, you see the Mermaid Lagoon with the Jolly Roger flying in the sky above. Then, with the last left turn, you arrive at your unloading station. So, uh, you know, all these things are cool. I feel like, how do you guys feel about this ride? I mean, there's so much going on in this ride, right? You go, mm. you go fast. Why not just slow it down just a little bit? Is, is the, hey, so Remy, are you guys yeah. able to slow this ride down? If you wanted to, oh, we can. If it, if it's during uh, an evacuation, you definitely can slow down a ride. That is only during evacuation. But but can, well, like, can you slow it down for? And I mean, I mean, if you have a button, it stops. It stops, right? And you can lower it, yeah. or whatever, right? But can you slow it down? So let's say, let's just say, right? This ride is not an hour wait or two hour wait. It's like you know, fifteen minute wait. Can you slow it down so people can actually? So the ride takes a little bit longer, so you can kind of enjoy everything, kind of see everything that's going on. Not really, because it's on a time. It's on a time okay. track. Okay. So okay. You can't you can't touch it or anything. It's only you can only slow it down during evacuations only. Okay, that's a good point. Because if it did have a short wait, I wonder if they would slow it down. Because it is a short ride, so they could easily make it fa- longer by slowing down the track a little bit. But because the wait time is always so much, I don't see a reason for doing that. But yeah, it's a good point. Speed it up. Make it a thrill ride. Yes. <laughs> put some put some loops in there. Oh my call, God. call it an indoor coaster. <laughs> put some loops in there. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> make it actually make make you actually feel like you're flying like Peter Pan. <laughs> That'd be kind of interesting. Barrel rolls. Barrel rolls. Yeah. In 2014, Magic Kingdom's Lion Q got a revamping. It now took its inspiration from Disneyland's Lion Q, adding in a corridor with interactive murals and heading through the Darling's house and eventually the nursery. In 2015, the ride at Disneyland closed for refurbishment for six months. They added in new animatronics of Wendy, John, and Michael, now flying above John's bed in the nursery. They previously had John and Michael sitting in John's bed, with Wendy sitting on a chair next to them. New special effects were also added to the London and Neverland scenes. On April 5th, 1983, Tokyo Disneyland opened, and with it, a Peter Pan's flight replicated from Magic Kingdom's version. In early 2016, The attraction was renovated to include new digital effects as well as a new Neverland scene was added where guests now fly over the island of Neverland at nighttime before flying past the Lost Boys hideout, the Mermaid Lagoon, and the Indian Camp. On April 12, 1992, Disneyland Park Paris also opened with a replicated Peter Pan's flight, except their version is slightly longer, running three minutes and beginning with the flight over London at night. Well, there you go. If you want a longer uh, Peter Pan option, you'll have to go do that one. Yeah. Yeah. What was the time on that one? Three, three and a half minutes, oh, roughly. Sense. Yeah, that's a, uh, you know, I think that would be, I think this would be one of those attractions that if I was to go to all the parks, I would want to try this one out for sure. Because this is, this is what, the only one that's at all the parks, right? It's on the Disneyland's. Yeah. All the Disneyland's? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So this is one of those I would definitely want to go ahead and uh, check out. To kind of, so I'm able to kind of compare them all. Right, yeah. It would be cool. Remy, have you been the one in Disneyland, California? No, I have not. No. But that's on my that is actually on my bucket list. I do want to check that out and check the ones out over by uh, you know, Shanghai, mm-hmm. Paris. Check check those out too. Yeah. I don't remember the one at Disneyland. Um I'll have to uh I'll have to uh make it a point next time we go out there too. Yeah, how many times did you say out. well, can you give us like a maybe a guesstimate? How many times have you been on that one? Jen? What, the one out there? Yeah. I don't even remember going on it, to be honest with you, and that kind of concerns me, because it, is it a memory thing, or is it a, I didn't do it Maybe thing? you didn't do it, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm thinking it's probably you didn't do it thing, which is, uh, you know, I wonder if there's just as long as waits out there, then, because I- uh, I feel like we did. Uh, I don't remember. It's- Maybe they're so similar. You can't remember, kind of distinct from um, both of them, I guess. I'm really concerned now because I should know that. It's kind of like Alex. Alex is, is the one who has a terrible memory. Oh, a terrible memory. No, I'm getting old. I can't remember. 
excuse to go back to California once this pandemic's over. Mm -hmm. For sure. On June 6, 2016, Shanghai Disneyland opened. And of course, like all other Disneyland parks, there was a Peter Pan flight. This version had an expanded four-person Omnimover, and the vehicles could stop and change speed. The ride also included enhanced versions of scenes from previous iterations, as well as new scenes such as a splashdown into Skull Rock and finishing the adventure by flying straight into Big Ben. New technology allowed the characters on the ride to be enhanced. Projection animatronics created vivid animated scenes in the background. It was announced recently that Peter Pan and Wendy, a live-action television series, will premiere on Disney+. Plus. This series will star relative newcomers Alexander Maloney as Peter Pan and Ever Anderson as Wendy Darling, along with Yar Shahidi's Tinkerbell and Jude Law's Captain Hook. So another take on the story. Interesting. Jude Law's yeah. Captain Hook. I don't know. I, that that could be okay. I don't know. I don't I, know. I think that will work. Jude Law is re- so? a really good actor. Yeah. Right? And he, I usually like stuff that he's in, so I'm sure it's going to be fine. Plus, you know... I can't really think of too many things that have so far premiered on Disney Plus that I really didn't like. Right. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's true. So it's usually pretty good, right? Uh, if it's not pretty good, then it is at least good or good enough that I would watch it. So, yeah. I mean. Quick fire, quick facts. Let's go. You're actually only about 17 feet off the ground while flying through Peter Pan's flight. The tiny size models below give you the effect of flying high in the sky. In the Darling Children's Nursery, if you look closely, you'll notice two stacks of blocks, one near Wendy's bed and another near the window. One set of blocks spells the word Disney, while the other spells Pan. The ride time is on the shorter side at a total of 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Up until 2015, the clouds floating over London were actually just plastic bags. Keep an eye on the moon when you are flying over the city of London. Depending on when your vehicle passes, you may be able to spot three craters on the moon's surface that form a hidden Mickey. We here at Diz His love Peter Pan's flight in the queue. We are looking forward to the new content being released in the Pan universe. Raymond, you want to go ahead and say something about the... Because before the show, we were kind of talking about, you know, how high the attraction mm-hmm. is off the ground, right? And uh-huh. you said over at Magic Kingdom, it's 15 feet. Is that correct? Yeah, it's only, it's only 15 feet off the ground. Okay, and then probably... Uh, but they're all at all the different, like, attractions or, or, you know, at the different parks. They're different heights. So we're thinking 17 feet feet is probably at Disneyland. So, and I think, didn't you say that Shanghai was like 18 feet off the ground? Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely 18 feet. Uh, the, one in, the one in California is the same height here at the Magic Kingdom. Oh, okay, okay. Feet. Okay, so yeah. So, you got, you got a good range between 15 to 18 feet on this high def attraction. <laughs> high def. <laughs> cool. Ever thought about moving closer to the parks? Imagine being able to drive to the park whenever you wanted. If that's the case, then you must use Streamline Mortgage Solutions. Interest rates are the lowest they have ever been, so if you're thinking of refinancing, now is the time. Streamline will let you know over the phone if it's the best decision for you. They have been helping customers with mortgages and refinancing all over Florida for 15 years. Michael and Patty from Windermere, Florida use Streamline Mortgage Solution, and here's what they had to say about the experience. My wife and I couldn't be happier with the service and support we received from Brian and Leanna at Streamline for our recent home purchase. They provided excellent communication throughout their application and approval process of our mortgage, and we would certainly work with them again in the future for our next purchase. Visit StreamlineFlorida.com to get in touch with an experienced Streamline team member who will assist you every step of the way, supplying you with services other companies can't. Contactless services are also available upon request. That's StreamlineFlorida.com, S-T-R-E-A-M, LineFlorida.com. And make sure to let them know this has sent you. Memories, memories. Okay, so let's get to the memories. You guys ready to talk about some memories? Because I'm looking forward to this part. Yeah. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Uh, Alex, you want to go ahead and share your memory? Uh, I don't have any memories. You don't have any memories at all? I mean, I, oh, nothing, darn. nothing I can think of. I mean, like I said, I'm going this ride very often. I don't, I mean, I've been on it a couple of times, but nothing comes to mind of an actual event that happened or a specific person I was on with or anything like that. Okay. Okay. So Jen, our memory is kind of together, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it is. And you want to go ahead and share it? So the, actually it was the last time that we were there, right? Before yeah. um, the pandemic. Yeah. Right. Like right before they closed down everything, pretty much we, we were there. We went to um, one of the Moonlight Magics, one of the vacation club um 
parties that they do. Mm-hmm. And it was at Magic Kingdom. And so that's always the prime time for us to ride the um ride that particular ride just because the line is a little shorter. Yeah. So um we had kind of planned out our evening to go on this ride and then we were gonna try to go watch fireworks and everything would have been timed out perfect. It would have been. But it, except the ride stopped. Yes. For an for, extended period of time. For probably the longest. It was pretty, and for a long time. But keep on. And I felt terrible because <laughs> I dragged everybody on this ride. <laughs> I was stuck. But you wanted to see fireworks more than any of us anyway. I, and I could hear the booms. Of we the can fireworks. all hear the booms. And I was laughing so hard. I was laughing so hard. I was like, we're going to miss like all the fireworks. I was laughing because she wanted us all to go on this ride. And we we were fine going on it because I like Peter Pan or whatever. You know, it wasn't even that long of a wait, I don't think. And I was just laughing and giving her, I think we were kind of yelling at Jen, like, oh, I guess the fireworks are starting. Because we can obviously hear the fireworks. And we were it stuck was, there for a long time. Almost all of the was, fireworks. It was the longest. And it, just a pause. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And you could just hear all the booms. And it yep. was, I was so upset. But the coolest thing is that this, I walked outside, we walked out, right? And the fireworks, when you walk outside Peter Pan's flight, the fireworks are like right there. So we got to see some of the fireworks. They were like right there. And some of the firework dust got my eye. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, I was just, I mean, I was just, I'm kind of just joking. It wasn't that big, big of a deal. It, something didn't get in my eye, but it was only for like a couple of seconds. But it, it was, de- it was cool. Uh, it was cool getting off the ride and just seeing the fireworks right there, for sure. And it, it was a good memory overall uh, because, I mean, I've seen Disney fireworks so many times. Mm-hmm. And they're great. Like, I love seeing Disney fireworks. But yeah. that for that experience, I wasn't, like, upset or anything like that. It was it, it was kind of, kind of a good memory to give Jen a hard time because she was pretty mad. <laughs> one, time, one time at Hollywood Studios, my wife and I were there, and they were doing the Star Wars by where the theater. Yeah. And we were really close. I don't know. We were on the side. An explosion happened. I swear we kind of went blind for like a couple, like a half a minute. Like a flashbang? Yeah, it was crazy. We we're like, oh my God, why are we this close? Like, it was crazy. <laughs> okay, Remy, you got a memory for us? I do. So this was my very first attraction. I uh, went, on, went on with my dad and mm-hmm. my uh, the rest of my family. And I got so scared because I didn't know what was going to happen on this attraction. I thought I was going to fall off. Like, I'm like, oh, there goes Remy. Here, there he goes. Off of a pure pan. <laughs> but every time I go on that ride now as an adult, I still have, you know, that memory that I went on this ride with my dad and I still have that this that tear coming down my face. And I'm like, you know, it, it's, it brings that happy moment, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. And I think that's one of the reasons why. And that's another reason why Disney is so special because that's one of the I, mean, I remember going there with my. You know, I love going on Small World with my grandpa. I know a lot of people don't like Small World, mm-hmm. right? Especially those who haven't been as a kid and they're, and they're going as just as adults for the right. first time. And Small World's not going to be their favorite ride. But to me, Small World means something, right? Mm-hmm. I was there with my grandfather. That's one of his favorite rides. Dumbo. My grandma loved Dumbo, you know? And I, I enjoyed Dumbo a lot. And it's because that's my grandma's favorite ride. And I remember going on those rides with them and how much, how happy I think. I, it's more as I know now as a dad how special that was to them to bring your you know, like a kid to Disney World, and because it was special to me, mm-hmm. and they and and they saw it through my eyes. Right. It's the same thing with me and Nick. I see it through Nick's eyes. You know, Nick loves Small World. I was super excited to bring Nick on Small World. That was the first ride that he had, had was ever on. You know, at Disney World, and now that is that's his favorite ride. If you go ask him, he's seven years old now. And he's like, "What's your?" I'm like, "What's your favorite ride?" Small World. That's yeah. the first ride he was ever on when he was like, you know, one years old. So. Ever roll out of bed and feel like being a little bad? Three Cheeky Chicks Wax Company has you covered with their Villain Wax Melt line. The Sea Hag Melt will have you wanting to use that body language like Ursula with its bouquet of roses, lily, lilacs, and sweet violets with undernotes of musk. If you feel like you're going to have a meltdown like Hades, throw in the Wax Melt Ruler of the Underworld, which will fill your home with smells of lavender, rosemary, lemon verbena, cinnamon, coriander, leather, amber, and hints of smoke. Or, if you just feel like you are just the evilest one of all, get yourself the Mistress of Evil Melt. These Maleficent-inspired melts will release a woodsy scent with its crisp pine needles, white fir, clove, patchouli, oak, and sugar pine. No matter how you're feeling, make sure to visit MagicallyScented.com to purchase a wide range of wax melts, candles, and room sprays, all made by three cheeky chicks. There are plenty of holiday sales that will allow you to buy any smell that fits your attitude. 
That's three cheeky chicks at magically scented.com. So, Jen, what did you do in the world of Disney slash news? Uh, let me think. Not a whole heck of a lot this week. Okay. Yeah. How, about, how about you, Alex? That's fine. Alex, what did you do in uh, uh, Disney slash news? We didn't do a lot. Uh, my daughter got some Disney princess dresses for Christmas, and she's been wearing them like crazy. Today, she was dressed up as Snow White all day. And, of course, to go with that, we had to listen to the Snow, tra- Snow White tr- soundtrack, which isn't a good soundtrack at all. Like, it's just you know, you know, instrumental music for the most part. They have a few good songs, um, but I mean, we we listened to that thing probably from uh, before lunch till right at before we started doing PJs. We still listened to a little bit of it. It's like all day Snow White soundtrack. <laughs> so that's about it, really. Okay. So you should have it memorized then, right? No, it's just intr- instrumental most of it. Okay. How about you, Joe? What'd you do? Uh, let me take a look here. I got some notes. I didn't really do too much either because this was uh, my first week back to school. And oh, yeah. so I've been really the slammed. Uh, it's coming towards the end of the semester too, so it's had a lot of, a lot of papers to grade, a lot of people to call. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's just been really, really busy. But actually, got to I, uh, you know, I've been my son's been really into the Descendants soundtrack. Him and his friend, you know. I mean, yeah, they're in the Descendants, and so I watched Descendants, and it was all right. You know, I think it's kind of a cool concept. Everything how it's mm-hmm. like the the um, like the villains, their kids, and all that. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, so it's okay, you know. Let's just talk about the real sad news here, which is Sorcerers of Magic Kingdom is going away. Oh, yeah. I yeah. just saw that today. I forgot I was going to yeah. bring it up. Yeah. Which is just terrible. It's I love crazy. Sorcerers of Magic Kingdom. I have a lot of the cards. You know, it was a lot of fun to do walking around the parks. I love those little things that they do. And I'm hoping that they come back with something new. Well, did you hear why? No. Christina said, I don't know where she got this information because she was telling me about it. And she said, it said some, something says here or something or someone says that it's because they want to do more um app related stuff well yeah because a lot of the other things that they did for like you know at one point they had the um, they had like uh, the scavenger hunts over at epcot right yeah, and they have them at uh, and they had like the, they had like all these like little things that they that they would give you kind of like the cards not really cards they give you like a phone whatever you walk around but now it's all app related right and they have so them. i think it's kind of cool yeah. but i kind of like the cards though the cards are cool yeah it's like a collector's item thing yeah yeah i definitely enjoyed the cards i guess so. there's been a down uh, trot in it recently. Not a lot of people are using it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, it's also not too many people are going to the parks. I mean, it was like thirty percent capacity or something like that for a so, while. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what that's going to do to the value of those cards. I don't know. I have a whole bunch of them. Yeah, rare the ones. Value of, the value of cards should should last like uh, between fifty fifty to a hundred dollars, depending on what card you have. Yeah, especially like those really rare ones that you get at the events. Yeah, the parties. Yeah, I, which I have a couple of those for sure. Uh, but I know it's definitely like it's just cool to look at and be like, oh, yeah. But I, they put. I feel like they put a lot of time, like a lot of money into some of those little stations that you go, and it's mm-hmm. like a screen there, and things are moving. You know, yeah. it's kind of cool. Uh, but Disney never. They never just like. I mean, it'll get repurposed into something. Yeah, yeah, probably. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, how about you, Remy? Do you, did you do anything in the world of Disney slash, or do you have any news for us? I have some news, but uh, last week I went to uh, a few weeks ago. I went to Epcot with my buddy Evan, and I ate at Garden Grill for the first time. Oh, really? That's pretty cool. What do you think? I love it. Great, great comfort food. the The vinaigrette salad was amazing. I mean, everything there was delicious. And I kind of want to give a shout out to our server Brian. He took really great care of us there, and uh, th- that whole restaurant was so cool <laughs> i was like this is pretty dope i enjoy it uh but here i got some i got some disney news that i uh i covered earlier today on my podcast uh disney has announced new disney has announced new pineapple cupcake frosted cookies and pineapple fudge at the magic kingdom oh, oh i saw that i saw a picture of it and it looked delicious it does pineapple uh, fudge huh Hmm. Was, I think they're trying to get into like yeah. that, you know, that like um, specialty dessert kind of, you know, make you have to travel to the different parks to catch the different things kind mm-hmm. of. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Earl Sandwich at Disney Springs is going to be introducing to the public a beefy mac and cheese sandwich. It looks delicious. I saw this. It looks really, really good. <laughs> a beefy mac and cheese sandwich? Yeah, it looks really good. Okay. So put it this way, uh, you take a McDonald's McRib and just throw on a crap load of macaroni and cheese on top. 
It looks really good. That <laughs> sounds good. It's totally like, you know, it's like the unhealthy, the cheese that you really like a lot, you know, it's like really creamy. <laughs> I was like, going to say that sounds extremely healthy. So the meat they're using on a sandwich is a combination between roast beef and pastrami. Huh. Ooh. Nice. Yes, me really good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Disney has confirmed that Tron Life Cycle Run will not be opening in time for Disney's 50th anniversary. So yeah, I saw putting, that. So they're pushing it back until mid March. So it should be open by by then, by the end of March. And that's yeah, and because they totally like uh, they they sealed it off like big time. Yeah, yeah. So and it doesn't look like they're gonna start working on it anytime soon.H uh, Mandal- Mandalorian Mandalorian characters might be coming to Galaxy's Star Wars. Oh, cool! Oh, nice. That'd, That'd be sweet. Be cool to see Grogu. Cue the uh, five-hour wait. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wait times uh, will be long. Robo golf carts have arrived at Walt Disney World golf courses. Robo golf carts. So this is gonna be something that's like uh, you put your golf clubs on and it goes along with you. It goes along with you. And what's cool about these golf carts? Huh. They have they have little sensors that are connected to every single hole and you don't have to touch them. You can ride in it. There's no driving, no gas, nothing. They oh, drive wow. for you. It's almost wow. like an Omni mover. That's like on the golf course, a exactly. golf course for you. <laughs> uh, if, you guys want, if you guys want to take a look at it, it's a, uh, uh, the side Disney's robo golf cart. And it's in the shape of Mickey mouse. It has his head like right on the front of it. Wow. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Disney, Disney Springs Gideon's Bake Shop closes after a successful soft opening. Yeah, but you know why, right? Because I was going to bring this up here in a second, too. Is, you know why right, or no? So, so why? So why? why, why because why? they're redoing the insides of it because it's small, right? And I mean, that, I'm not sure of that. You know you know about that place down in, uh, where is it? Winter Park, was it? Yeah, first was in Winter Park. They, they still have it here uh, near uh, Ron's College area. Yeah, that's what I'm talking Yeah, like over... Yeah, right yeah. around that area. But like, and, if uh, if if they sell out of cookies, like they 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 have it open until they sell out, and which is like by like yep. what midday or something every day. So it's a pop. The cookies unbelievable. It's probably like my favorite cookie. It's really good. Really, uh, I haven't tried. Oh one. my gosh, they're so good. What do you think, Remy? Have you eaten one of those cookies? Mine is a double double chocolate chip, and it's delicious. It's amazing. Sounds it, like too much chocolate. No, no, man, don't say that. It's too, <laughs> don't, don't you can't understand. say you can't say no to too much chocolate. Yeah, you can't uh, say that, man. Uh, right now, the Opera House in Orlando is doing something for cast members that were furloughed, and they're putting on performances for these for these cast members. Uh, mm-hmm. I know someone who is do who's part of this, and he was like, "Hey, man," he's like, "Do you want to you know have some of these cast members on your show?" I'm like, "Yeah, that sounds like a." a uh, great idea and i was like and he was like do you want to go ahead and do some like spotlights for him and i was like yeah that that sounds that also sounds really good so hopefully here you know in the next couple of months i know they do it every the second thursday i think of every every month uh they just started doing it type of thing and these ca- the cast members are coming together so go we obviously want to support these these cast these Disney oh, yeah. cast members um mm-hmm. And they're, they're, the main goal, obviously, is for them to get hired to do something because they're not working right now. Right. So I'm looking forward to kind of meeting these cast members, having them on the show, uh, doing virtual spotlights with them because it's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah. That's the His on Peter Pan's Flight. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Jen. And I'm Remy. Thanks for listening and have a magical week. Please follow us on all social media by searching DizHis65. Share us and subscribe to our podcast to get the latest show when it is available. If you want to help us out, get tips, get your memories shared on the podcast, see pictures and videos of what we are up to at the parks, join our goof troop on Patreon.com and search for DizHis.